Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new edition of Initiative Africa. And like every week, we continue to pull up the curtains to reveal innovators, entrepreneurs and individuals who are changing the face of Africa. Today, we put the spotlight on sustainable agriculture and fashion. But before we delve into these inspiring stories, here's the summary of our show. He has been revolutionizing men's fashion in Pointe Noire as founder of Leo Cross Style Design and promoter of the Remo Fashion Week, the rendezvous for fashion innovation. His elegant creations transcend borders, dressing renowned personalities around the world. Lionel Ambroise is our guest today. I'm very passionate about fashion and clothing. Fashion means a lot to me because Leo Cross today represents my image and everything I am true close à travers nos vêtements. Sustainable transformation. Sherif Din Akeju reinvents Benin's agriculture with Fan Coco. Fan Coco a une dimension. Fan Coco has a varied dimension in the manufacture of its objects with coconut derivatives. How can we produce and consume locally while alleviating the inflationary effect of the war in Ukraine on foodstuffs? An association in the Central African Republic is looking for the solution. We do not produce, but we support local producers. We want Central Africans to consume what is produced here at home. Let's now enter the creative and sustainable world of Fan Coco. This startup transforms coconut waste into a multitude of aesthetic and functional objects. From wine glasses to earrings, find out how Fan Coco is reinventing recycling for a greener, trendier lifestyle. Our journalist Aidaso Uloj traveled to Cotonou to share this fascinating report with us. Fan Coco has a varied dimension in the manufacture of its objects with coconut derivatives. Gallery promoter Dame Annie Randolph works with a number of craftspeople, including Fan Coco. Fan Coco is a startup that recycles coconut waste by transforming it into decorative products and useful everyday life objects. Wine glasses, drinking cups, Soap dishes, pen holders, lampshades, earrings, buttons, the list goes on. Recovering this waste begins with sorting. We have to sort simply because we have to remove the waste inside and not only that, we sort according to the item we want to produce. The work continues in the workshop until the finished products are produced. For the promoter, the aim of recycling this waste is to help protect the environment. Coconut shells generally spend 12 years in nature before degrading. So every time we throw them into nature, they are so resistant that in the raining season, they act as rainwater receptacles in which mosquitoes multiply easily. We are also taking part in the fight against climate change because every time households buy these drinking cups from us as a replacement for plastic cups, we are limiting the production of plastic cups. But we are also limiting the CO2 emissions of the companies that manufacture this plastic packaging and we are limiting plastic waste in nature. According to Benin's National Institute of Statistics and Demography, activities in the coconut sector generate 100,000 tons of waste every year. The waste consists of branches, mainly coconuts, that people eat and then throw into nature. This is a real problem for big cities like Cotonou, Ouida and Semi Kopoji today. According to environmentalists, coconut waste recycling helps preserve the environment. This waste could degrade the landscape, pollute the air, contaminate the water and the soil, and so on. But it's a good thing when we recover these husks to make art objects of all kinds. A whole value chain is being created around recycling coconut waste, which means job creation and business opportunities.
ça produit de la valeur ajoutée forcément. It generates added value, of course. It adds value to the portfolio and increases household income, which can help combat the rife unemployment in these towns. When we look at the value chain, the primary seller of the coconut can sell it for 75 or 100 francs. But the intermediary who comes to display it and sell it to the buyers can go for a maximum of 200 or 250. Donc vous voyez, lui, il peut aller maximum 200, 250. Lorsque vous voyez maintenant la, le produit final... When you look at the final product, these materials used are expensive. So it's much higher than the primary cost of coconut. It also contributes to creating a circular economy because waste is no longer thrown away. It is recovered and put back into the cycle to have a second life. Given the many advantages of recycling coconut waste, the government must be able to create an environment needed to promote this value chain. The state is in the process of implementing a policy that will enable our coastlines to be greened, and this activity will create more coconut waste and therefore more raw materials for these local industries. The state must therefore be able to support these promoters by promoting their products and setting up the appropriate commercial framework. Meanwhile, Fancoco is diversifying its customer base, which includes households, businesses, hotels, and tourists. Yeah, cette confiance -là, qui, qui this se trust fait, has been built et, up et, qui se, qui and is maintained between Fan Coco et, et les, and the consumers et les of our products. De, 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 de Here are some of the testimonies of Fan Coco's customers. The buttons, the buttons are made by Fan Coco. My clients are very, very satisfied. The customers are very, very satisfied because when I offer them the product, I emphasize the work that has gone into it. The accessories, in particular the fan cocoa buttons, and I think that I can read in them the pride they take in wearing this shirt, which is totally made in Benin. Totalement made in Benin. Fan Coco has a promising future. When visitors come, they're attracted first and foremost because it's a product that's been worked on and shaped. It's a miracle and something to be encouraged. Recycling coconut waste gives it a second life and creates a value chain with multiple environmental, social and economic benefits. He is the creative genius who is reinventing man's fashion in Africa. Based in Pointe Noire, our guest is much more than a designer. He's a visionary, a pioneer of modern elegance. Through his emblematic brand, Lille Cross Style Design, he shapes contemporary aesthetics with creations that combine sophistication and innovation. From the local scene to the international catwalks, immerse yourself into the captivating world of this master of African fashion. Mr. Leo Cruz, you are a designer of Congolese and Nigerian origin, promoter of Remo Fashion Week, the rendezvous for innovation and fashion. Where does this passion for fashion comes from? Ever since I was a child, I've been cradled by this passion. I can still remember being at nursery school where I did my very first fashion show in my mother's presence. I always had to greet the promoter, if not the headmistress, with a wreath of flowers. And that's where the desire to be a mentor, to be a stylist, started. At home, I tinkered a bit with needles with my clothes that didn't fit anymore. As I got more familiar with things, I became good at arts. At primary school, at theater, at events, at organizing emulations, and so on. 
I got to secondary school and I started to get interested in modeling. After modeling, I tried a bit of photo modeling and then I got into clothing. So clothing, fashion, and today I'm a stylist. After my studies and law degree, I became a stylist, fashion designer, and promoter of Fashion Week, and I'm perhaps realizing my dreams. You are the hidden face behind the clothing brand Leo Cruz Style Design. What does this brand represent? Leo Cruz Design represents represent my world. I'm very passionate about fashion and clothing. Fashion means a lot to me because Leo Cross today represents my image and everything. I am true close and I express this through my creations. Why have you chosen to focus solely on menswear? I said to myself, I'm a man. I design clothes first. I used to like designing clothes because I like to wear what I wanted, not what other people were creating. So I started drawing clothes and making them. Being self-taught, Leo Cross for me is me. It's all me. And the men's wear, that's all me too. The men's wear is all me. And all I say to myself, why not dress other men? Because there are more women designers than men designers in our country, here in the Congo. So I said to myself, why not focus on men's clothes? Have you ever been approached by ladies who want you to look more closely at women's outfits? If so, how do you react? Of course, I've been approached by several women over the years. There are men who always ask me, why not women's clothes and all that. I say to myself, women are a bit stingy. Everyone knows that. Women are a bit stingy and making women's clothes takes me a long time. And that makes me a bit tired. And with female customers, you have to argue. Afterwards, there's a moment when I ask myself, why not launch a few women's pieces so they feel more comfortable? Let me try to see that I sometimes want to include them. From time to time, I do a few pieces for women. You see, this is a piece for women. It's a dress for a new collection I'll launch very soon. Welcome to the second part of our show. The situation in Ukraine continues to have an impact on agricultural commodity prices. In the Central African Republic, wheat imports amount to almost 17 billion CFA francs a year. To reduce costs, one alternative is to substitute part of the wheat with maize or bean flour in food production. But how can local production be boosted and local consumption encouraged. Our correspondent in Bangui, Bertrand Medagaimas, takes us on a tour of the Yeti Kodro Association, which promotes local Central African products. Find out more about this initiative. Helped by her daughter, this street food hawker has just fried kose, galettes made from peas. It's a local product fancied by Central Africans of all ages. These kose are made with peas that we buy on the market. 
It costs only 25 CFA francs and is bought by everyone, whether young or old, school children and workers alike. Consistent in filling, Kose serves as a morning sub-base. It's very popular among both national and expatriate consumers. Although peas are not grown in the Central African Republic, beans are widely available in the country. It is found on the menu of many households and in schooled canteens in the Central African Republic. Let's turn on the fire to prepare the rice and beans. Soon the students will finish school and they'll be hungry. Golden and a delectable smell rising from the cosses, they are appreciated for the energy they provide and are as irresistible to school children as it is to the passers-by, whether on foot or by car. The first thing that attracts you is their delectable smell when you pass by. Secondly, they're nutritious and cheap. Just two or three of them with a drink, it's yummy and filling. It gives you all the strength you need to get through the day. Kose are among the products marked by the Yeti Kodro Association, meaning things from the country. It is appreciated in the same way as the other products promoted by the association. Here, in this package, there are bean leaves. You won't easily find them in the supermarkets. This is millet flour made by us in perfect sanitary conditions. The association's first initiatives were launched in 2016 in Bangui, the capital. It has since expanded its activities to two other cities in the country. Since the start of the war in Ukraine and the difficulties encountered throughout Africa in obtaining supplies of Ukrainian wheat, mobilization is the mantra to mitigate the situation. We do not produce, but we support local producers. We want Central Africans to consume what is produced here at home. In the Central African Republic, the prices of essential commodities such as flour, oil and sugar, to name but a few, are already rising. For several weeks now, we have been witnessing a surge in the prices of essential commodities. And these are the goods that are imported, unfortunately. The war between Russia and Ukraine is penalizing us. The bag of flour that we used to buy from the wholesaler at 30,000 CFA francs has become 40,000 CFA francs. We're forced to sell one kilo of flour, which used to sell for 750 CFA francs, at a retail price of 1,000 CFA francs. That's a lot. All vendors' eyes are on the Central African Republic authorities. They are especially concerned about the situation in the country, which is known for its alliance with Moscow. The Prime Minister, head of government, has set up an inter-ministerial committee to propose actions that could prevent our country from suffocating. The specific action aimed by the Ministry of Trade and Industry is about reducing our dependence on imports. To this end, we are encouraging and directing our investors towards local products processing in collaboration with energy, agriculture and livestock ministries. Yeti Kodro does not limit itself to local food production, as it is highly involved in the economic development of the country. In 2021, it was awarded the Orange Prize for Social Entrepreneurship in Africa and Middle East, designed to encourage innovative associations. And one of its initiatives has been to set up a workshop called Kayena, in which craftspeople and also the youth with some sewing skills can come and work on machines made available to them, exchange ideas and seek advice from other experienced sewers. The name Kaina means to share. It is the Kaba dialect of the Central African Republic. Share what? Sharing the experience between dressmakers. Right now, we have six young girls working from Monday to Friday. I did not come to Yeti Kodro as a sewer, but as a marketing agent. 
Within Kaina, I gradually became interested in sewing by learning to knit from my sisters in the Kaina workshop. A wide-scale presence in Bangui and the sub-prefectures of Paua in the northwest and Bria in the centre east of the Central African Republic, Yeti Kodro is living proof that despite economic and food crises such as the one caused by the war in Ukraine, solutions can still be found through initiatives and the will to return to traditional local products. And let's go back to our guest Lionel Ambroise for the rest of his interview. The Congolese designer shares his experiences, projects and thoughts on fashion in Africa. Take a listen. You are the promoter and artistic director of Fashion Week Remo, the rendezvous for innovation in fashion. How did Remo originate? What motivated you to create this Fashion Week? Remo was born of the idea to create something great for my country. I started it because I realized we don't have enough fashion weeks in the Congo. We barely have two or three around here. The Carousel International de la Mode, Braza Fashion Week, and others whose names I may have forgotten. And I thought, why not create another event that will be international, like the others highlighting the players and their know-how, highlighting what they want, highlighting the young people who want to get into the Congolese fashion industry. I told myself I wanted to create an event where the players could draw on the national level of genres to develop their art. I came up with the idea of designing Remo a project I've been working on since 2019. Since 2021, Remo has seen the light of day, and today we are at our second edition, soon to be our third. What do you expect from Remo? Alors, euh... What I expect from the Remo is a grandiose international scope. In five, six or seven years' time, I see it as an event that will welcome international celebrities. It's not just about fashion. It's about entrepreneurship and tourism, and it's about showcasing Congo Brazzaville. I think that in 10 years' time, Remo will be known and seen by everyone. You usually dress politicians, business leaders, artists, and others. Which celebrities have you been asked to dress that you didn't expect, and how did it go? So there was this personality which I wasn't expecting, a politician, a member of parliament from my constituency. It was during past meetings. They came to my house because my father is a bit involved in politics. When my father passed by, he tried to talk to me and introduce me to the gentleman. My son is a lawyer and he went into fashion. He's very passionate about it. The man told me, I'd like to try on what you're doing. And I was surprised and thought, wow. I'm going to dress a political figure in position and everything. I was thrilled and moved. A few days later, he called me and said, Leocus, I'm going to come to your showroom so you can take my measurement and make me a beautiful made-to-measure outfit. And from there, he came, the next day, he arrived, he was very nice. I went, I took his measurement, and I made his outfit. He arrived and picked up his outfit. 
What do you think about the fashion environment in the Congo? Alors, l'environnement de l'armée du Congo uh, est en The fashion environment in the Congo uh, is in a state sociaux, of evolution. Uh, in other Congolais, words, with the arrival of social networks, the Congolese fashion industry is making its way forward. Many designers still have many players evolving around this industry, making efforts, moving forward, and having new visions. That's already good, because before we didn't consider the Congo with designers as we had before. Still, we didn't consider it on an international level. We didn't open up the Congo. Today we have designers who can move forward, take flight and do shows as well. As for me, that's already a perfect evolution. You've taken part in a number of fashion shows and exhibitions, both nationally and internationally. Can you tell us about some of the experiences that really made an impact on you? J'ai beaucoup appris de comment déjà organiser. I've learned a lot about how to organize a fashion show. I've already learned how to highlight Congolese fashion. Mettre en lumière. I've already participated in several fashion shows in Congo Brazzaville, including the Carousel International de la Mode, from which I emerged. The four days meters de la mode. Biso na biso. Biso na biso. And at the international level, I took part in the CETA International Textile Show in Lomé. Et ensuite, j'ai participé au grand festival. I'm participated in the euh, big Togolese fashion Fimo festival Fimo 228. Et vraiment, euh, These were beneficial experiences because I also learned what other people were doing behind the scenes, how these things were organized, and what was at stake in a fashion event. Uh, and that made me aware I learned a lot from it. What are your plans for the future? Alors, mes projets, uh, à de, My projects. I like to have a big fashion structure, a fashion pour, uh, school where I like to train finale. and bring out other fashion designers then to grow the micro style and design brand internationally. Ensuite, la marque Lyoko Style Design sur le plan international. Et ensuite, s'il faut dire enfin... Finally, to make Remo one of Africa's most influential fashion events, why not in the whole world? That's it. Those are my future projects. C'est cela mes projets à l'avenir. Well, that's it. Initiative Africa is over for today. You can find the interview with Lionel Ambroise as well as our programs on our website, africaonair.com. And of course, don't hesitate to follow us on our social networks. And feel free to share, like, and comment with the hashtag Initiative Africa. And don't forget to tune in next week on the same channel at the same time for Business Africa. Have a great week. And until next time, goodbye.